Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thanks to all of you, including Johnny Hernandez, Hi Tech Oki, Chris Zaragoz, and brand new patrons TJ and Yixuan Lu. Yay! On this episode of DTNS, the VR, AR, and AI that Meta announced at Connect, plus Scott Johnson's thoughts on Logitech's new Adobe Entwined ah. Stream Deck like device, the MX Creative. <laughs> this is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chen. I need to hide the magic word later in the show, don't I? <laughs> yeah, because I, like, I knew. I, I mean, I, I'm like, yeah. I, are there going to be several screams? I don't know. I'm going to stay vigilant. <laughs> the word is entwined. <laughs> <laughs> Scream. Ah! Uh, yeah. Uh, we got a lot to get to with this Meta Connect, so let's start with the quick hits. Google filed a European Union antitrust complaint against Microsoft over unfair cloud computing practices that Google says reduces customer choice and also raises prices. The company alleges that Microsoft's Windows software locks users into its Azure cloud services by imposing financial penalties on customers who want to switch to rival providers. Google says if you move Windows data to Azure, it's basically free, but if you do the same with a competitor, that can be up to a 400% markup. Google wants the EU to agree that Microsoft should remove these restrictions. Microsoft claims it's already resolved similar concerns with other European cloud providers and is doing nothing wrong. European privacy rights group NOIB, N-O-Y-B, has filed a complaint in the EU against Mozilla, the privacy paragon? Uh, saying that Mozilla's use of the Privacy Preserving Attribution, or PPA, module violates the GDPR. PPA collects interest at the browser level and then submits it to an aggregation service. So your individual browsing habits are not shared, just kind of general interests, and they're aggregated, so they are somewhat anonymous. However, the complaint says... This is still tracking, especially since Mozilla doesn't have a mark, enough market share to end cookies, and you can use some cookies with some PPA data to backtrack and figure out who you are. Firefox also has this collection on by default. So if you agree with Noib that PPA is tracking directly, then having it on by default would probably be a violation of the GDPR. Mozilla says it has only conducted a limited test of PPA. It has only implemented it on its own websites, and the feature is easily turned off in settings. OpenAI's chief technology officer, Mira Marathi, posted on X on Wednesday, After much reflection, I've made the difficult decision to leave OpenAI. There's never an ideal time to step away from a place one cherishes, yet this moment feels right. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman wrote in response, We'll say more about the transition plan soon, but for now I want to take a moment to just feel thanks. Well, while he's doing that, uh, we're getting ready for OpenAI's Dev Day, which is starting next week. Yeah, that's like breaking up by text message, isn't it? Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you you know, say thanks, and then let's see what's going on. Well, for those of you who don't like gossipy spats, I'm sorry, but we have a follow-up story about Automatics, Matt Mullenweg, and WP Engine. Uh, Yesterday, we mentioned WP Engine sent a cease and desist to Mullenweg over alleged disparagement. So Automatic has now sent a cease and desist to WP Engine, making specific its trademark violation allegations. Uh, The WordPress Foundation also changed its trademark policy page. Now, remember, Automatic and the WordPress Foundation are different things, but both Matt Mullenweg's children, so to speak. The WordPress Foundation said, in relation to trademark, now, the abbreviation WP is not covered by WordPress trademarks, but please don't use it in a way that confuses people. For example, many people think WP Engine is WordPress Engine and officially associated with WordPress, which it's not. They have never once even donated to the WordPress Foundation despite making billions of dollars of revenue on top of WordPress. Mm. Yeah. Yep. 
Meow. A security vulnerability in chat GPT allowed attackers to plant false memories and then malicious instructions in its long-term memory capabilities, which would potentially let somebody have access to user data in perpetuity. Researcher Johan Reberger demonstrated how this could be exploited by making chat GPT believe information that was fabricated in the first place and then sending all user inputs to an attacker server. OpenAI has addressed the issue at least partially, although prompt injection attacks can still manipulate stored memories so you know they, they, keep 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 your memories uh, close to you <laughs> We mentioned yesterday that Logitech introduced the MX Creative Console. It's a customizable controller uh, with, with physical buttons for creative professionals, including a dial. You got some buttons, also a touch screen to control various software tools. Maybe it would be Photoshop or Premiere, for example. The device is part of Logitech's MX lineup. These are all designed to boost productivity and workflow for digital creators. Sells for $199. Uh, shipping starts October 14th. Now, Scott, word on the street is that you do some digital creating. I don't know if I'm right about this or not, but if I am, what do you think? Well, uh, all right. You guys remember the the Microsoft Surface Studio a few years ago? They haven't really updated it that much, but it was yeah. like a big desktop The solution. big desktop touchscreen thingy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the one cool thing about it, I thought at the time, is they had that weird puck thing that you would put on the screen. You could right. dial it and do stuff to control the things. Dial. And then nothing. Kind of this, the whole initiative went away. And we haven't heard much about it since. So along comes Logitech with something that immediately piqued my interest. And I like it when uh, these kind of tools show up that aren't necessarily locked into only using with Adobe products or only with any other competitor's products. Something you can kind of program to use how you want to use them. Um, I personally think this is a big deal. I think it's great. And I think artists are always looking for more tools, especially those that are sort of locked into the, my tablet is connected to my PC or Mac and I need... Uh, you know, interface tools that will help me get the job done. Um, in a lot of ways, this is like the Elgato uh, Stream Deck, not to be confused with Valve Steam Deck, I always have to make that clear, <laughs> that is, uh, you know, a bunch of assignable buttons that can do all kinds of functions. And already I have artist friends, including myself, who use that device for some of what they're talking about here. Um, the advantage here, though, is we're talking about more than that. You have that puck-like device, you have some other buttons that can be assigned. You have the digital front buttons with the, with the little uh, LED displays that are programmable and let you kind of decide what you want to put with those. Um, the real hard part about these usually is penetrating the habits of artists who are already making digital content and making them change. F feel like it's enough of, a, of an improvement that they're going to change their workflow uh, to make that happen. And sometimes that's an entire shift to a whole new platform. A lot of people move to iPad Pros when when those happen and you know that started to take off. So that will be the trick here. The real test will be, will folks integrate it in a way that will make them okay with like changing up their habits? And will Logitech on the other end of this support this, you know, in, you know moving forward? The only concern I really have about this is they have amazing hardware at Logitech. Always have, love their mice, that's all I use. I love them. I'm worried about software side of this. Uh, G-Hub is terrible and some of their other stuff that they put out there for for drivers and other solutions are really bad. Does so, the integration with Adobe make you feel better or worse? Um, it makes <laughs> me respect. feel a little better because it means obviously they're communicating and, and Got it. They're, they they seem like these are you know, well suited to each other. Probably a lot of eyes on what yeah. works and what doesn't. I would think so. The the trick usually is drivers and stuff that just sort of manage it up in your up in your task menu or something where you're just like quickly trying to make a quick change or whatever. They are not known for good solutions in that regard maybe that's changing maybe this thing will have nothing to do with that i don't know but that is one thing i'll watch for uh when it lands and i hope we have more to say once it comes out because i think this is a pretty neat uh pretty neat addition to the are to you the gonna get set. it are you i think wait? i might i might actually yeah. get it the big trick for me will be will 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 i have as much customization as i can outside of the adobe ecosystem as i want because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm currently kind of not in there the way i used to be and I use a lot of other competing products. Can I still? Yeah. Does it try to sort of, kind of nudge you back into a specific workflow that it work it works best with, right? Not necessarily if, what you work best with. Exactly. And if you're making a lot of content that is like 3D content for 3D printing, for example, your 3D modeler, let's say, out there, will these tools be uh, 
tweakable to the point that I can happily use those in 3D applications. And I, I just don't want it to be a one-trick pony and only work well with Photoshop or Illustrator. Yeah, right. I think that's I, bad I, for this that market. Premier. Yeah. I also yeah. think your, your note about just uh, how much do people want a workflow that they're really dialed into to change? I mean, yeah. yes, we can always change workflows. And, and sometimes it makes things more complicated and often it makes things easier. What I, my fear, if I were to have this kind of workflow, I'm like, all right, now I've got like a few more things on the desk. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like those new things aren't going to do everything that I need. So I still need my keyboard. I still need my trackpad. But now I've got this other stuff. Does, does it... Do, do these sort of, you know, essentially, you know, hot key configurations help me or create yeah. more complexity with, you know, you know, uh, under the guise of helping me? Yeah. And you're also running out of ports and you've got to swap other too. things around and you're like, oh, man, I don't know if this is just more stuff or if this is really going to help me. And honestly, I think the 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 killer app here might be video editing, uh, whether it's Premiere or, you know, DaVinci uh Resolve or something like that, where you know you're doing a lot of scrubbing with the knob. You're using yep. the shortcut keys for very much needed all the time shortcut keys when you're editing. So that may actually be the killer space for this. When it comes to the artist stuff, it's usually two or three buttons uh, accessible by your thumb or something are all you need. So this might be overkill. That's what I'm saying. I need to see it in the wild, get some use cases out of it, see what people think, and then we can make probably a better. Uh, uh, you know, distinction on what's going on. But I love that they're doing this. I will say that. I think it's great. Give people more tools to work with. Refine it. Do better. Uh, we'll see if it has some lasting power. I have good news for you, Scott. You can still buy the Surface Studio 2 Plus. Great. I'm on Starts it. Starts at $4,500. Oh, never mind. I'm not on it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. We'll, we'll, st we'll stick with 200 bucks. Sure. Still there, though. For the still MX there. Creative Hasn't Console. Away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, folks, if you would like to start a fund to help Scott afford a Studio 2 Plus or start any other kinds of conversations, uh, you can do so in our Discord. Our Discord is full of people who support the show. And if you're one of them, you can join by linking to a Patreon account. Just link your account to Discord. Our server shows up immediately. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Meta Connect uh, was this morning as of the day we recorded the show. Uh, and it was nice, tight, compact, well-performed announcement. Uh, I'll give them that. I mean, we can decide what we think of the actual things they announced, but uh, well done on the execution. Uh, the star of the show right off the top. First thing Zuckerberg did is Quest 3S, $299, shipping October 15th. Uh, it is a 128 gigabyte, so smaller storage than the three, although you can get a 256 gigabyte version for $400. Same processor as the Quest 3, but it has the Quest 2's display, the Quest 2's field of view, therefore, uh, and it has no depth sensor. It's one gram lighter than the three, though. Uh, it's got longer battery life than the three, uh, it has the same RAM and the same processor as the three, eight gigabytes of RAM and the Snapdragon XR Gen 2. Uh, the Quest 3 is also getting a price drop. So the Quest 3S will be 299 and 399. The Quest 3 drops from 649 to 499. So you now have 299, 399, 499 in the Quest lineup. Uh, and they're bundling Batman Arkham Shadows uh, with either the 3 or the 3S if you purchase it by the end of the year. Also, they discontinued the Quest and the Quest 2. So the Quest 3S and the Quest 3 are the only headsets that they sell here. Now, Sarah, let's we'll start with you because I know you're into VR. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about the 3S here? It seems like it's more like a 2 Plus than a 3S, but well, whatever yeah. you call it, right? And I don't, I don't have a Quest 3. I have the original and I have the 2. Uh, the 2 is what I use almost every day right now um, for uh, VR fitness stuff. And so the Quest 3S, uh, to me, if, if, it, if it's a tiny little walk back from the 3, I can see someone being like, eh, not for me. But for me, I'm like, oh, okay, it's great. So it's lighter, battery's better, less storage. Yeah. I don't use a lot of storage uh, on the Quest anyway. Um, I, I, I kind of just cycle through five different apps. Uh, and you can just, I don't know, get rid of something and, and re-download it later anyway. So, so yeah, I... I don't know. I I I feel like I I should probably be in the market for a Quest Three just to just to have my finger on the pulse. But the Quest Two works out nicely. 
if discontinued means support stops, then, you know, no, we'll just see not, what that just, looks like. They're not restocking them. They're even going to continue to sell them until they sell out the inventory. So support should yeah. cons- continue for a while. You should be fine there. Yeah. yeah. In that case, I, I'm I'm good to go. Um, Quest 2, not perfect, but it's uh, it's my my little ride or die. My It's my daily VR guy. S- Scott, you want a 3S? I do. Um, Here's the trick. I have felt like since the th- uh, 3, they have priced me out of what is interesting to me like I, I just haven't felt like the price is right and now i think i could see that like i, th- I think that the price is right the price is right bob come um, on down scott i i feel like i would uh i feel like that middle skew has gone Kids missing because the middle skew went at, not that the two was ever the middle skew but the two was so affordable Right for what it did it was actually a really great bump up for for not that much money i think they were 299 at the time um, and probably still are if you can find them. Uh, but the, the the going straight to what they did with the three, I was like, well, where's my middle ground? It was a little mm-hmm. like when you know certain computers go to pro levels and they forget about the middle guys. So I just fell off after the two. Like I'm not going to pay attention until there's something more reasonable. And I feel like that that middle tier is back, and I'm now interested in getting that maybe over just a straight three. Uh, you know more than I was before. So Initial reviews me. are that this is uh, this is the right compromises. People are like, it still looks fine, even with the the, the Quest 2's display and everything. Uh, let's move on to the Meta AI announcements. Uh, Meta AI, across the different uh, products that it is integrated with, uh, will now let you do conversations in real time. You could do that on the glasses. You couldn't do that elsewhere. Now you can do it everywhere you have Meta AI. Uh, the generic voices are there, as well as celebrity voices. You can have Meta AI be the voice of Nora from Queens, a.k.a. Aquafina, Dame Judi Dench, John Cena, Keegan-Michael Key, or Kristen Bell. Uh, you can uh, show it a picture. It's multimodal now, so you can ask questions about a picture that you upload to it. Uh, they are piloting a translation tool that would automatically translate voices in Instagram Reels. So they're doing a small test with creators in U.S. and Latin America on that, and it can respond to requests to change and edit photos from text chats in Instagram Messenger and WhatsApp. So you get sent a photo, you can say, oh, change the background or, or remove that, that, that you know, p- piece of trash in the background, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, they also announced Llama 3.2, which adds the ability to understand images, which is powering some of this stuff in Meta AI. Uh, this is kind of catch up. <laughs> Most of the other models already do this. There are two vision models under Llama 3.2, an 11 billion and a 90 billion one. They work on ARM hardware. Uh, Meta AI, imagine, is coming to Facebook Messenger and Instagram to generate photos and captions for Instagram. And last thing, they're testing a new feature that creates AI-generated content for you and then puts it in your feed based on your interests or current trends. Oh, gosh. Called Imagined For You. <laughs> That's just what I need. Just what I need. Like, curious oh, how that one's going to work. The yeah. stuff I didn't ask for, but you know I want deep down if inside. I mean, if they're really good, maybe you'll be like, okay. I maybe, did want, yeah, I sure. I did want that skateboarding raccoon I mean, eating you a know, pizza or whatever. Yeah, like a, it, it's like the, <laughs> the AI friend, you know, that you 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 know you'd clip on your lapel and, and says nice things to you throughout the day. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. If it works, great. A lot of this stuff is... I mean, it. I I don't want to be a naysayer because I I want to check it out first and see how cool it is. I feel like it's going to contribute to a lot of social media noise, mm. and there's so much already that you know I'm kind of like, all right, you know, AI generated captions. I mean, if I don't have a caption, man, maybe I just shouldn't post it in the first place. Actually, the I, caption is the one I like. The captions yeah. the one where like sometimes I'm just a, a I'm like, oh, what should I say? And if it can just suggest something, I might tweak it a little, but that 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 could be helpful. Yeah, I don't need it I, I to show so. me a picture of myself in a astronaut outfit to inspire me. Yeah, that, I'm kind of with with a little bit of Tom and a little bit of Sarah here. I think it's um my biggest problem with Facebook owned properties, or I should say meta-owned properties, is they're already very noisy Uh with a lot of fake AI stuff that's being presented as real. They haven't really gotten their head around that. So the idea that i got to go face more of that that is just the (laughs) system telling me what to look at, that is not really appealing to me on the face of it. Now, they may surprise me and have uh, I may have a delightful time the next time I 
you know, prance around through Facebook for. But is this going to be used for ads? It's going to be like Scott. Look at you in the latest Armani line. Don't yeah. you want to buy? Click here. I, I mean, mean may, I, Minority can, Report did that. Why we're, we're heading yeah. there, man? We're going. Maybe it can make some recommendations better because I'll tell you, I will watch one. Like I watched like a Britney Spears video, like a month ago and everything in the for you carousel is all just like little funny meme things about Britney Spears. Uh, and I keep saying, see less, see less, you know, sorry. I looked at the one video. My God. Yeah. And it, you know, it's like, it's, it doesn't work that well. It doesn't, mm. it tries to know what you want based on a very small amount of data. If this could make it better. Okay. Yeah. Arguably yeah. it, it could make it better or worse. <laughs> We're about to find out. Right. Right. Uh, something that is universally praised, though, are the smart glasses, the Ray-Ban Metas, uh, and they are getting new features. There's there's a new design. The new clear frames got a big round of applause from folks. Uh, even Tom's hardware was like, ooh, those look good. Uh, but the new features coming to Ray-Ban Metas include reminders, which has the glasses take a photo of something and then remind it remind you about it later. So, you know, you're looking at your keys and you're like, remind me where those are so you don't lose them. Uh, you can look at a QR code or even just a phone number and then either have it clicked, you know, or saved to your phone or called uh, on your linked phone. Uh, live translation in English, French, Italian, and Spanish. Multimodal video AI. Uh, and an interesting one called Be My Eyes, which connects you to someone live who describes what is seen through your lens, which is, you know, a, a visual uh, assistance uh, feature that I thought was interesting and didn't get a lot of pickup in a lot of the coverage I saw. Interesting. I don't... But also uh, new clear frames. Okay, fine. That's, that's what everybody cared about. I'm, I'm, mean, I'm still I, convinced I kinda that... I kind of do care about that. I think, you know, a clear nice frame looking. and a black frame are very different looks. So yeah, that's you're true. Gonna, you're going to get some people being like, oh, okay, I would wear these. I don't think I'm... I think I'm not alone in this panel here on this, or maybe I am, but I think that glasses as an interface is is a thing we will see and i don't just mean like i don't mean like full vr and ar and you know all the capabilities but this does feel want. like this it's the right step it's, it's starting the to right get step momentum, yeah right? this is yeah. where you start you're starting small and thin and you're getting thinner um i think Thank that's you. a huge part of <laughs> part of this tom you're looking great and uh i actually think you're yeah. getting a little too thin today, so. <laughs> you're a little i thin. should eat more yeah. yeah um but yeah like you do have to start somewhere, but also I just think the interface is a safe bet that we are going to have something on our faces at some point. And the sooner you get your head around that and get the right size and form factor, the sooner you will dominate or get the market. it around your head. Yeah. My big giant head. That's actually <laughs> true. There's a yeah. Lot Not of everybody wants that. to wear glasses. You know, uh, you and I are wearing them, Scott, uh, because we have to. Yeah, Sarah yeah. decides not to and wears contacts, right? So sure. yeah, it's I'm yeah. going to be sunglasses curious I'm if fine everybody with, wants but this. Glasses yeah. all day. It's yeah, too, you're not wearing the sunglasses glasses. inside, no. or most of you at at night. No. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And not I, all of you are Corey Hart. I don't My, even really like wearing sunglasses. I mean, I just don't like wearing right? glasses in general. I mean, sometimes I just do because it's sunny. But but uh, no, in a perfect world, I don't know. I feel like uh, something between the VR options we have now and the glasses options that are getting there that <laughs> maybe looks more like, you know, swimmer's goggles or something. I don't know. But something that's, you know, really secure, you know, like um, is immersive for your eyes. I don't know. Or Projecting onto your retinas from something that's implanted in your skull is where where this conversation well, that's where it's, that's where it tends goes to eventually. end up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we're not we're not there yet, but we did get another look at Project Orion, uh, which is Meta's concept for augmented reality glasses. So if you're if you're getting confused, Ray Ban Meta's just have audio. They have a camera that can see and respond, but they don't show you anything in the glasses. Project Orion is the pair of glasses Meta is working on that will show you something. So these are like Snap's Spectacles 5, except way smaller, but still for developers. And also, you can't get them. Uh, these are in the concept phase, but they are real. There are some internal people using them. There's some selected partners that are using them. Uh, they have the projector in the arms of the glasses that projects the content onto nano-printed lenses. So the idea is to give you a holographic uh, entity floating in your natural field of view, 70 degree field of view, which is pretty decent. Yep. Uh, by all accounts from the people who've tried them, good eye tracking. Uh, they have the voice control, just like the Ray-Ban Metas. Um, and they weigh 100 grams. 
uh, you have to have a puck in your pocket, though. There's It's wireless. You don't have to have it tethered. Uh, but a lot of the processing is done on a separate thing in your pocket. The other thing they announced along with this is a wrist-based neural interface, which I take exception to them calling neural, but... It's a gesture detection wristband that detects the movement of your wrist muscles. Now, the idea is you just think about something and your wrist muscles move, and then that will be able to control things. It's not like, oh, I have to do big sweeping motions. Uh, so it's neural in that sense, but it's not connected to your brain directly in any way. That wristband is going on sale. They didn't give us a price yet, but they said it will work with Meta's other AR hardware. Mm -mm. I don't like the term either, and here's the reason I don't like it. Because if that's a ear neural interface, then so are my earbuds that can tell when they're in my head or if they're not. Kind and of. So is right? my pencil in my hand. I it's mean, connected to my brain because I'm making it moves. Like where I'll, I'll where I'll defend them is that you know you can think about something in a way that just causes your wrist muscle to contract almost without you realizing it, and it feels like your thoughts are controlling it. But they're not. Yeah. And I think that's what they're getting at. But it's, it does make it sound like it's like reading your brainwaves, which it definitely is not. Yeah. Doing. But this, we are not in that. We are, gonna, we are in the hellscape yet. of uh, how are we going to market things related to AI. It's going to get weird for a while until we start standardizing on how we describe it. And, you know, we're going to get shyster stuff. And it's just going to be the way it is. Well, so. but okay. So, so Project Orion, you know, again, we're, we're still in concept, the concept era. Um, but... This almost, it almost sounded like Apple Vision Pro to me more than anything. It's like, oh, you know, like these things you could do, but they're glasses. It's not this whole big right. thing that not is tethered to it. A rather large battery pack that you, you know, you have to figure out um, how to, how to keep on your person or, or quite close to you. Um, it, it, something that's in the middle of this is, I, I'm, is where we're going to land here. You know, the, the, what you wear on your face is not going to be the huge things that we wear right now. I don't know how they're going to get there, but they're going to get there. And glasses aren't quite right either because they're not super secure on your, you know, if you, if you do jumping jacks, like they might fly off of your face. You don't want that either. Something in the middle of the two feels like. Well, you could you could do a band around the back of the glasses, like sport glasses, maybe. You could. Uh, sure. You could. For, for something like that. Yeah, but you're still I letting wonder, light in the edges. So there's that to think about too. I wonder if they can do the things that are in the control puck on a phone. In other words, they're not doing it because this is a development uh, version, but maybe you, you can put them on a phone at some point, and then, then it's something you're carrying with you already. Um, that would eliminate that part. Uh, they're still kind of thick. Like, they're obviously le way less thick than an Apple Vision Pro, but they're, they, they're still kind of bulky, so they need, to, they need to keep slimming it down to where they can be Ray-Ban Meta glasses that have Project Orion in them. But it does, they are making progress. They're, they're not as bulky as they were the last time they let us take a look at them. True. My goal is to have... Uh, I, want, I want what the uh, Apple Vision Pro does, like, functionally... But I want really thin, basic stuff like this on. If I can do that, I'll yeah. wear glasses for the rest of my life, and I may never leave them. I still want the they... implants, even though yeah. I wear glasses. Well, those would be true neural uh, neural interfaces, and I yeah, think then you can then, then you can call it a neural interface. Yeah. That's fine. Why not? All right, let's check out the mailbag. We got one from David who writes in, Recently, I was in a nightclub in Miami and bumped into a guy you. with the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. Oh, Very cool. Nice. Talked about all the uses for them that I would have. Taking shoots on the beach, uh, taking shots for my runs, etc. But I'm interested to see where the space is going. I know Qualcomm is providing chips for the latest Ray-Bans. That's going to change to MediaTek. Who is in the space? Who's trying to get into the space? And is this something that Intel could get into i mean sure i mean yeah <laughs> intel could. could get into any space if they could if they can yeah that, that is a big question um, they can if they can uh, yeah. i do think arm designs are are very good for this kind of thing this very small lightweight kind of thing so intel you know it's not impossible that intel could do arm designs right so maybe uh it it feels like something that Risk Five, which is a, a more open uh, standard, uh, might be good for as well. So I, I'd keep an eye out for that. Qualcomm is committed to doing some Risk Five design, so maybe they will do that sort of thing. Uh, but interesting question, and and yeah, uh, definitely another space for 
for chip companies to be able to compete in because uh, it does look like this is going to keep getting bigger. I'm, I'm ready for somebody to give Ray-Ban Metas uh, a, a run for their money. Like who, who's going to enter that space next? Not that there aren't plenty of smaller companies doing that. There are, uh, but none have got the momentum uh, of Meta. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking around to see like who, who's going to step up and become the Android to Meta's Ray-Ban uh, Apple or whatever. Snap. Maybe not. <laughs> nah, Snap would like you to think that they're Snap is, I mean, they, they're they they're still going for it. They got a thing. You know, don't yeah. count Snap out yet. Sure. Yeah. There's uh, there's X-Real, you know? They're, they're out there. We see them every year at, at CES. So, I don't know. PC Mag even has a best smart glasses roundup. There's Camilo and Rokid and all these Amazon Echo frames. All kinds of stuff that you probably don't realize is out there. So this is this is a brewing space. Yep. Uh, also, Daniel wrote in in regards to Duolingo and uh, needing the Max subscription in order to get some of the new AI features coming to Duolingo. As a super Duolingo subscriber, I'm unhappy that Max is another tier. It seems like unrelenting upsell. Still sticking with my subscription for now. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Daniel. Uh, I'm actually not even doing the... I'm just I'm on the free version right now and just suffering through commercials. But um, but yes, I, I, I can see where if you're already paying for something and you're committed to it, being like, oh, cool new features for more money. Yeah, apparently it's not going to work was, for everybody. I was talking about this with Daniel. Uh, apparently he sees buttons that say, oh, you want to do this? You got to upgrade to Max, which is the upsell he's talking about. I never see them in my language because they aren't available in Korean, oh, which is what I've see. done doing. Well, and so. that's the thing. That's kind the annoying the... upsell thing, right? Is you yeah. go like, oh, cool new thing. Oh, gosh. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you to everybody who writes in to us. We couldn't do without you. Keep that feedback coming at feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Also, Scott Johnson, you keep yourself coming right back here. Once yeah, a week, if not right. more. Young man. <laughs> young young more. man. And let folks know where they can keep up with you the rest of the time. Well, it's where I'm the youngest. Uh, find me on Core. And the reason I bring up Core this week, we bring it up a lot, but my Core podcast, which is all about video games and the industry around them, is going to have a bit of a heyday this week talking about some weird stuff going on with Ubisoft, with Sony, and a bunch more. And plus, they just had a Sony State of Play yesterday. Lots of new stuff announced. Was it any good? Well, we'll talk about it. That's on Thursdays over at frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your shows. In fact, uh, patrons stick around for Good Day Internet. We're going to uh, pick Scott's brain about some of those new games coming for the PS5 Pro. So we've got that coming for you here a little bit as well. Cool. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC is when it all goes down. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young, a new dad, joining us. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>